Yes, it's Kai Michelson. How you doing? Kai, how are you? Well, we kind of got over our head a little bit, but we, I guess we're getting this thing going. How are you doing? Wonderful. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get you on here. Stand by. That's what happened. Awesome. Here we go. Okay. Uh, awesome. Hey. Awesome. Awesome. Here he is. Hey, we're up and running. Hey, Kai, how are you? Thank you so much for helping us out with the video. <laughs> well, man, I, I'm liking that, that shirt you got on. Hey, you know what? I like your shirt too, man. I, I, I got to say, I was feeling it. <laughs> Well, it's a little flashy for an eighty-one-year-old guy, but it's uh, it's cool, right? Hey, age is relative. Age is relative. That's what I always well, say. I might uh, be actually be wearing a Don Garlis racing shirt. Uh, even when I used to be an executive, I used to come to work with my tennis shirts, uh, tennis shoes, and a t-shirt. So, but anyway, you know, if you're not having fun, then what what is work anyway? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, you got that. I think we might have a uh, face mask uh, to. Uh, uh, match that shirt as a matter of fact. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you got one, I'll be happy to wear it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll say something. So, so Kai, I mean, your story, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so last minute, I know that people all over the world have been anxiously waiting uh, to meet you and uh, to hear your story, especially having dyslexia and all of your accomplishments and the things that you've done um, with the way you learn. And I, you know, really without further ado, I, I would just love for you to just share a little bit about your story here. I know it's a big one. Um, and just give our audience just some, just, just enlighten them on how this all began, please. Well, uh, I, I was born in Red Wing, Minnesota, and I started kindergarten there. And then we moved to South Minneapolis and back in kindergarten again. But unfortunately, the house that we rented they had outdoor toilets, so the city came in and kicked us out. So we moved again. So I went to three kindergartens. How's that for a warm up? Oh <laughs> my goodness! Oh and my so goodness! Not knowing the the disabilities that I really have, I finally got into first grade, which of course I flunked. And uh, I, I, no matter what the teacher told me, as many times as she would tell me, I couldn't remember it. And um, I was uh, actually really scared to go to school, and I, I couldn't understand why I couldn't learn as fast as the rest of the kids. And I was way back. Um, I struggled uh, in school. I mean, I really struggled in school. They didn't know what dyslexia was back. They had no idea what People it was. are still trying to figure out what dyslexia is, unfortunately. Well, I don't really know what it is myself, but the one thing I know for sure, every person that I, I've ever met with dyslexia, they have other talents. And they're really uh, on the other side of the brain, they're very, very talented. They just have to figure out how to use that. And, um, you know, nowadays when you got a cell phone or a computer, if you have a question or you don't know, ask it. Don't be afraid to ask it. It's the best mm. source that you're about to get. But I struggled all the way through school, dropped out of ninth grade. Uh, at one point there was, I had a choice to going to a boy's home or go back into school. And so I started uh, doing some vocational machine shop. I went in there for a while until I was uh, of age. But I got married when I was 16. I don't recommend that to anybody. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I had three children before I was 21. And um, uh, as it turned out, I had a very large family. But in order to do that, you just got to work hard. And you have to support my family. And I've always said, if the harder I work, the luckier I get. And that's so true. You know, nothing's ever been handled handed mm. to me. Um, I, I didn't know what my learning problem was, but one thing I knew was that I had a lot of talent in other areas. And um, one day I was watching TV and they started talking about dyslexia. And I'm going, oh my God, that's me. I'm dyslexic. That's what's wrong with me because I couldn't, I could not, it feels like one side of my brain, eh, not so good. The other side, yeah, pretty smart. But um, I have more like a mechanical uh, photographic mind. I, I would kind of kind of look at, I have a talent that, um, and I don't know if anybody else out there has that talent, but I will tell you, I have. I do all my- And if you have it, please, if you have it, I want you to post in this comment below and I, I want to know, let's take, a little, let's take a little poll here. Go ahead. Well, it's like this. Everything that I build 
in the last or built in the last 30 years, I've designed in bed with my eyes closed. And I have a gift that I will tell you, I can take a snowmobile kingpin, attach a piece of hardware to a ski, to a frame, to a motor, to a clutch, to a drive, to the rear track and drive it away. And I'm telling you, I have done that so many times. Like right now I'm building a telescope. Do I have drawings for a telescope? No, nah, my father made a telescope back in 1948. So now I'm gonna make a Kai Michelson style telescope. One that I would build. That's more artsy looking, polished. Oh looking, yeah. Through little marks in it and stuff Ooh. like that. Yeah. So, but that was all designed in my bed. Stunt work back in the days of stunt work when I was involved in doing stunt coordinating and, and we made all kinds of equipment for the stunt industry. I could lay in bed and watch somebody jump off a, uh, off a building with a cable. I could sit back and pick out what could possibly go wrong. Even to this day, now if I don't have something of that in my mind a building, whatever I built that day, I will look at that and say, in a, uh, to criticize myself, could I have done that a different way? What about mm. if I would have taken a drill in the hole at 30 degrees instead of 45? Or what, uh, what about should I, you know, did I make the right decision of using a quarter 20 bolt or a quarter 24 bolt? I mean, so I pick my thing up, and guess what? It puts me to sleep. But I wake <laughs> up in the morning because yeah. I've changed designs so many times. It's the creative mind that dyslexic people have. I mean, I'm telling you, that brain that you got up there, you have to figure out how to tap that bad boy. Hey, would and, you say it's a superpower? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I, you know, I love to sit down it, with engineers. It's so fun. They can start laying some stuff on me. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> all of a sudden I say, by the way, you know how to weld? Have you ever used a bandsaw? Have you ever used a lathe? You know, how much you, you might know a little bit about engineering, one side of engineering but I know a little bit about them all different oh, directions. My. Right, because you can see it from all the different angles. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to mm -hmm. say to somebody, that ain't going to work. Why? I said, it's going to kill you. Well, I tell you what, I don't want to tell you how many people, and I said, if you do that, you're dead, but I want to tell you, it's more than that. And that's pretty sad. As I've said, you do that, and you'll be dead. Now, so I, I, I'll ask you, I mean, so you have this nickname, Rocket Man. I mean, no one just gets that nickname. You have to earn that nickname. So, so tell me about how you how you got Rocket Man as your as your as your nickname. The, the first time I ever saw a rocket actually was back in the '40s, and they put these Jato bottles, Jet Assist bottle, rockets, on these big planes for taking off on short runways. And I was at the Minneapolis airport where the Navy was there. And uh, we were over there with my dad and I, I saw one of those things go up. Not too much long, longer after that, I got my first Gilbert chemist, chemistry set. Back then, nowadays you get to make disappearing ink, boring stuff, nobody wants to get hurt. But back then, black powder. They had all the chemicals to make black powder. My mom went up to the drugstore, says if my son comes up and needs chemicals for his chemistry set, it's all right to sell them. Well, that led to firecrackers, much bigger, bombs. And that led because of what happened with the, the bombs not going off, but blowing the cap right. off the end and shooting down the block. Now we're making rockets. And so we started making plaster of Paris no uh, nozzles. And before you know, we got little rocket cars were shooting down the street. And that led into zinc and sulfur rockets and uh, fire extinguishers. Oh, man, I should be telling everything. Oh, no. Was, hey, oh, if no, you got kids watching this, be careful. No. Yeah, yeah, fire stingers with some stuff we put in, and we tape out a hockey stick and make a converging, diverging nozzle, put match heads up underneath, light it, and it fly beautiful. I mean, I, and so that led up to, uh, up to that point. So now in the 60s, um, we, we did our first hydrogen peroxide rocket, which I ended up buying a rocket car, which is called the X-1. And I pulled the wheels off and put skis on it. And now all of a sudden I go and set the world record on ice and set, get in the Guinness World Record book. That was my start of my racing career going after world records. Well, then uh, we put wheels on, 
We ran the very first 300 mile an hour on an NHRA track. Only 300 very, mile an hour? The very first 300 miles an hour in a quarter mile. And we did that down in Florida at an NHRA Gator Nationals. We ran the very first four seconds at an NHRA Spring Nationals. Then we got with we, we start going from state to state and setting land speed records in every state in the United States. And then we went on and did some international and national records, ended up seven, setting 72 state national and international records, speed records, and the last time records. And after I got a little done with that, it's kind of a long story. I want to build a car to go through the speed of sound, but it was stole from me. A 40 foot car was stole from me. Kitty O'Neill was going to drive the car. It just. Oh, the actual my... car was stolen from you. Yeah, it was stolen from me. Yes. Yeah. It was hit. It was hit for about 30 years. And uh, if you, you know, do a little research on me, you'll find out the whole deal. We found. Oh, that I we know. know I, I, I have it. It's, it's very, it's very extensive. I mean. It's, uh, you know, when I, when I hear your story, that there, there's so much to your story because, I mean, frankly, you're not just the first civilian to launch a rocket to space, which I am so curious about. And I know that our viewers are, are also very curious yeah. about, but, you know, let's, let's go back a minute to when you were a kid sure. because we have a lot of parents out here that are watching you with kids who are aspiring engineers who have super unique minds that maybe didn't fit quite in the, the molds in school. And to, can you just take us through that? And how did you find confidence in school? Um, I know that school, you know, everyone has their opinions on, on, on the best way to be reached. Um, but if you don't mind just sharing a little bit, what yeah. when you first found out that you had dyslexia, was it later on or? Yeah, take us through that. Yeah, well, I was 30 years old, but I want to, uh, when I first found out I was uh, in my 30s, but I, I'll take you back to school. Uh, and this story may not mean a lot to you, but probably somebody out there. I was very, first off, you know, I had pneumonia. I was very, very thin, uh, very skinny. I was not a really healthy kid when I was younger. And um, back then, we used to have a desk with a, a, a little, a drawer below where you put your books and all that. And a teacher walked out of a room and this guy by the name of Timmy Quakenut lit a piece of paper on fire. And when the teacher came back, he threw it back in the drawer. And of course the teacher saw that, put it in the sink, grabbed the kid by the ear. And I sat there and I said, oh my God, I wish I was that brave. Oh man, that's so cool. It's not really cool. But back then it would, it, it's, how can somebody do that? I was so scared of everything. Well, now when I'm in third or fourth grade, my dad started teaching me about electronics. My father was totally into electronics. He was into a lot of really cool things. And so he taught me how to build crystal sets. That was the first thing that we would I built was crystal sets. So I made many, many different models of my crystal sets. And along came, um, I, I took my, see my math book, I couldn't really read it and understand it. By the way, when I say I can't read, I can read, but what happens is, is you can't comprehend because mm. your focus, you're trying to focus a line that you're reading, but your mind wanders the whole page. So right. it's really hard to comprehend. So it's very, very hard to com comprehend. So anyways, seeing now what I saw with that kid did with that little deal to get a little attention, I took my math book, carved it out with an X-Acto knife and built a radio inside of my math book and brought it to school thinking I was going to be really cool. Well, I had this thing on my desk with one hand and my earphone like this, and I showed it to the kids who were all looking at me. And then the teacher figured, well, something's going on here. She grabs the, bo the book. It's attached to a wire, which is attached to me. And she's, what is this? It opened up. She's, what is this? I says, Mr. Becker, please don't take this from me. Please don't take this. She says, what is this? I says, it's a radio. She says, well, where'd you get this radio? She says, I built that. She says, you built that radio? Yeah, I wound the coils. I put the daughter and I started all the diodes and I started all the wires. Put the uh, grand and grounded antennas. You did this? And I said, yeah. She went and got another teacher. as the first positive thing that was about, about me. And it gave me so much strength inside. Mm -hmm. So my next little thing was called 
Kai's little cremator. And I took <laughs> my mom's pickle jar, got a jar, piece of wood in the bottom, a nail up through it, a, a nail and a piece of wood like this on the top, hooked up a wire up to it, 110 volt, put a hot dog in it, plugged it into a 110 barbecued a hot dog. Heck, electrocuted it. <laughs> it's actually like a big resistor. Yeah. But you, you know what I you know what I like though about what you're sharing, and I think this is important for parents um, as they're watching this is this is creativity. This is what happens when when we let our kids run and explore what what they're passionate about, right? This oh, is something that you are passionate about. And and Kai, let me tell you, I I resonate with you so much because I mean I you can see my train set a little my bridge I'm building behind me. I you love rockets. I love model trains. Yeah. And these are outlets. These are, these are activities that we need and rely on to have the confidence to tackle the areas when we're insecure. Okay. Yep. And, you know, I know that we're getting a lot of questions asked by parents. Um, and I'm going to ask some of your questions in a minute for those of you who are posting here, but I, I, I just want to acknowledge that because what happened was that was your, that was your outlet. And you were so passionate that it brought you it brought it into school. Now, do you remember this teacher's name? Yeah, teacher Mrs. That, Becker. Was, yeah, Mrs. Becker was one of them, yes. That what I, I want to just pause that for a minute because look, we remember our teachers' names. I can tell you my teachers' names. The ones that stood out to me, we remember their names. Yeah. And it's less the content you learn, it's more of the relationships and the experience that you have. And that's something else for the teachers watching this. Remember that we remember your names. Okay. The teachers, the teachers yeah. really have to know what they mean when they say something to a person, how much they'll remember that. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, I, I have to tell you a story. I got to go forward now many, many years and then we'll go back. But so I ended up, uh, I started a, a, a cosmetic company, which I did very well financially. And they had done how many companies did you start, by the way? <laughs> oh, I don't, you know, I honestly don't know, but it's over 20. And, and okay. every company I've never, I've ever started is never related to an accident. It has nothing to do with the other company before. Nothing. So anyways, Amazing. I get a call from this teacher. His name was Clarence Booth. And we called him Shorty. And he was actually a, cl a clown in the, in the circus, surrounding the circus. And he would come to school in this big furry coat with a bee and a propeller on, on top. How could you not like this guy? Well, anyways, <laughs> the guy's retired 30 some years. He calls me up because he saw that newspaper clipping. He says, Kai, I would love for you to come over. I would love for her to come over and talk to you. And I says, well, what about? And he says, you'll see. He came over to my house and he pulled out a slip of paper because he was moving into a retirement home and he was going through a cardboard box when, back when he was a teacher. And there was a piece of paper that said, this kid will never make it. Mm. I was that kid. He says, I am here to tell you how proud I am. I took a picture of him and I can send it to you in the front, front of my house next, standing next to a rocket. You have no idea how much that meant to me. I mean, it, that was the icing on the cake. I have the chills. And you know, to, the, to, to, to tell you how much school affected me is my son, Buddy, who is now, he's now 20 years old. When he went to school, I was a single parent and I went to school with all his events. And I, the second I stepped out of my, a car into that parking lot of that school, I started to shake. And that's the God's truth. And that's how much that is in me about, mm. well, I don't want your kind around here. You know, what did I do? I couldn't learn. I couldn't help it. They didn't know. You know, there I was facing going to a home, a boy's home. You know, I couldn't learn. They thought I, I mm. it. Well, after a while, you, 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 you but yeah. shock classes, yeah, A's, A pluses, and I doubt if I ever got a B in a shop class. Everything I worked with my hands was right on. Math, all the rest. I still have one of my report cards from third grade that says that I, the, the Kai is a, is a quiet little boy. He has a trouble something about learning. I could pull that card up and show it to you. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the teachers really have to know what effect they really have on the kid. Right. Yeah, right. really. But it get, the, see, I don't want to cry. Over, that's what built this character of mine, where I can you you can build it, I can build. Like I, I said, the story. Somebody said, Kai, I'd love for you to go to work for me. 
I say, I'm the last guy in the world you want to hire. Because if I like your company, I'm going to own one just like in the next 60 days. <laughs> See, that's the, power, that's the power <laughs> of the dyslexic mind. That's the power yeah, of the is. dyslexic mind. Because when you realize it, and I love sharing this story to kids that I mentor, is that look around you. Look around you. Everything you see around you was made up by people no smarter than you. And on top of that, it once didn't exist until someone wanted to make it exist. Exactly. Right? Now, Kai, I, I, we did have a question on this topic uh, by Melissa here. She asked, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 12-year-old self? Um... Probably hang in there, Kai. <laughs> You'll get through it because that's kind of what it was. But Melissa, it's um, you know, it's really hard to to give a feeling what you feel. But um, I, I, I to be honest with you, I just absolutely hated school. I mean, I mean, I was scared of school. Yeah, you know, kind of a funny story. I ended up uh, with my the my uh, first grade teacher that flunked me. I ended up with her again. Oh, and then man. when third grade came around, I got her again. And so my mom was said something like, well, Kai, maybe you should stop bringing cookies because my mom always made homemade cookies for me to bring to the school teacher. I said, I got to stop bringing these cookies. <laughs> it's kind <laughs> of a joke, but it was kind of like how it no, was. No, I, so. I, I, I get I'm, I'm right, I'm, I got it. I know. <laughs> I, I, I think, Kai, that what it, it, it's true because I, I love that question. You know, what would you tell your younger self? Because look, my story, like you in third grade, I was on my report card. I have the report card to show also that I, it was a two paragraph analysis and nine sentences talked about my behavioral problem during independent reading time. Yeah. And when we look at it from the step beneath and all, we didn't realize this at the time. I made this discovery about a year ago. But why was I misbehaving? Well, it was just because I'm an auditory learner and I was being forced to read visually. If they just yeah. put earphone, headphones on my head, on my ears, it would have been a totally different experience. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and, and I think on top of that, look, you were passionate about rocket ships. So if you were to read books on rocket ships and, and just things that go fast, perhaps they may have gotten your interest more than reading a fictional book on on whatever, and that was for me, like anything nonfiction, anything that is related to trains, oh, obsessed over. Yeah, same here. Well, if they had a lot of pictures, I would look at a book and and whatever pictures there, I put to it, it's like being a detective. You kind of piece the story together. If it's got pictures, yeah. I'd figure it out pretty darn quick. But just the comprehending of, uh, of a full page of something is pretty mm -hmm. tough. Yeah. You know, here's something else too that, I, you know, now that you're sharing this, I, I really do think that we should embrace the fact that our path is going to be different than the traditional one. With, for example, when I was in high school, I read, I utilized SparkNotes, which is just like, I utilize different um, platforms to help me read and understand the book more than just reading it page for page. Yeah. We found ways to make it work. So what I'm curious is, do you, do you feel that, we should embrace the fact that the path is going to be untraditional. So therefore we have to take untraditional approaches to help our kids feel successful and confident with how they learn. Yeah. Well, it, um, I have to, so I, I have to tell you this story. My son, when he was about nine years old, it, actually it started way before that, but he would always, if we're in the car, he'd go, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, D. And he started singing a song that, Come on, Dad, say your ABCs, because he knew I couldn't. It was his way of picking on me in a fun way. Mm. So he would do that to me, and then he knew it really bugged me. And I, one time yeah. we were down in Texas, and he just would not get off the deal. He just kept going at me. Finally, one day, he says to me, he says, I said, he says go to ABCs as far as you could. I said, oh, yeah, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, he says, Dad, what was the next size rocket you launched? I said, an F. So rocketry, motors and rocketry, a B has twice as much propellant as an A. A C, see, now I can't. So the, as you go up in the alphabet, it doubles the propellant. So I've got motors all the way up to the S. And so what I do is I think about the rocket that I, it flashes like nothing. So now I can go, 
Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Now the rest I'm winging. S, T, R, R. No, well, the rest is history. No, yeah, right, I, right. I've gone up, okay, so I've gone up to S. And now, but see how quick, quick I can do my out because I see that, visually see that rocket. Same as like yesterday, this this girl's name was, uh, was uh, Amy. And she says, you know, I, I bought some, a, lot of, a lot of masks from your son. She says, I'm surprised you don't know my name. And I said, because I know I'm going to, because now I'm going to think of uh, Army every time I see it. But here's the embarrassment. I, I have a lot of friends all over the world. and I, But I can have 20 of my closest friends at a table. And if I know five of their names, right. that's a miracle. Because right, right. I mean, close look, friends names, of mine, I right. can't, it just short circuits me right up when somebody says that. right and i think a lot of a lot of people those um you know kids that i work with do i mean memorizing names is challenging but what's cool that you did was you related to something visual imagery to to the to the alphabet which helped you remember it and yep. you know what but does that define how smart you are no look <laughs> at what you've created look at what you've accomplished and i would love for you to actually share the story of how you were the first civilian to launch a rocket to space. Because I think that is, that's inspiring because as you're watching this, everyone, you can see that, you know what? When we're kids, when you're in it, when you're in school in the fog, it's hard to see the other side. It's hard to see that, that path. But here is a great example of Kai who struggled in school, just like your kids, just like myself as well. And he is incredibly successful because he embraced his dyslexia and who he was. So Kai, if, if you don't mind, please sharing, how did you, how did you get to space? Well, first off, I do want to point something out. Please. If you look at an overall uh, project that is just huge, I look at it as a mountain and you take a chip out of that mountain, you keep taking chips before you know you're going to get right to the top. So, we have a rocket club here in in town and it's called triple it's actually it's all over the world and uh, one day a guy came into my office with a uh, magazine high power rocket magazine and she says hey guy look at the rockets they're building nowadays the same guy and i were building rockets back in my day so i look i summoned to it and it says the world record's thirty six thousand feet i said oh man i'll bet you i could beat that like nothing <laughs> so i show up at this club meeting and uh, I brought a rocket belt with me at the time. And they're looking at you, who's this guy anyway? And um, I said, I want to break that record. Well, they're pretty conservative up here. So but anyways, right off, I went and got my level one, level two. Then I went to a national event and we set the, the alt we had the highest altitude record there at 36,000 feet. And the one rocket that we built looked like a ballistic missile, something that was military. And they'd <laughs> never ever seen anything like this. And he's, the guy says, how do you expect to get respect from your peers when you come out with something like that? And I says, because I have no, because I have no peers. Because <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, because I'm kind of a cocky guy. Now, when I you know. heard that, when you heard that, though, what, 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 because that was a naysayer. Did that trigger you remembering school or was that, what happened when oh, someone yeah. says oh, yeah. you can't it's do a, that? Yeah. It just, the, the Johnny Rebel out of me from back in the school days. It's the chip on my shoulder that mm. I have from back in my days. And I live with that chip every single day. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this beautiful, big, huge rocket that I built, it ended up blowing up and everybody's diving underneath the trucks. And this guy comes over and he says, now at this time, I'm now working in the film business doing special effects work. And he says, oh, Kai, I feel so sorry for you. I says, what? Because your rocket blew I says, what do you mean? The business I'm in every time I push the button, it blows up because that's what I'm doing for a living now. So then this, the next year, we went, come back and got the record at 70,000 feet. So we've almost doubled the record. At this point, I'm going, you know, my biggest dream was to go through the speed of sound. And that dream was taken away from me when we, my car was stolen from me. I'm going to put a rocket into space. Yeah, you will. Well, <laughs> what I didn't know, there was laws against that kind of stuff. In fact, you're going to get real technical about it. It's a federal offense. This could be up to five years in prison, $250,000 fine. So anyways, I, I find now lucky because the next rocket I came out there with, uh, that particular rocket, the upper stage, the bottom stage lit, but the upper stage didn't light. 
because that would have been really high. It would have went into space. Meanwhile, there were some people that uh, they, they started a thing called the Cats Prize, the cheap access to space. And this guy put a quarter million dollars up for the first guy who could do that. Now, one of the things is there's could you, ha you have to obey every federal law and transportation and all these laws. So they got this group of people that went to uh, Washington, D.C. to meet with all these federal agencies. And then they start talking about, well, wh what's the highest one of these guys have done? He said, well, there's a guy in Minneapolis at 70,000. Well, the Office of Space Transportation, a guy jumps out of his chair to F.A. and who gave him permission to do that? And he said, we did. Well, as it turned out, all these agencies don't know who's got what. Um, right. Well, you know. So anyways, they, they come to the conclusion to turn into a long bunch of stuff. But now we have to go through that office. Out of the 25 groups of people that tried to get licensed, I was the only guy because I was persistent. And I was I'm just going to, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So if, if you go into my YouTube, mm -hmm. just go Kai Michelson YouTube, you'll see the story in there basically that uh, the New York Times did a video on me. And so I was facing a quarter million dollar fine, five years in the slammer, if I push that license without a but, uh, without, uh, push the butt without a license. Well, I followed all the tons of paperwork because I met up with people that could do that paperwork. I, I put the team, a team together, we call it the Civilian Space Exploration Team. And I put together a group of people that had some knowledge that really came forward. And we, so we did it as a team effort. Now, once we got all the paperwork into there without mentioning any names, I called him up. I says, where's my license? He says, I don't know. I says, do you realize I'm planning on launching that rocket on Thursday? And I says, you know, what's wrong with me as an American doing this instead of somebody from China or some other country taking that away for an amateur to put a rocket, an American putting a rocket into space mm. out of his garage? I says, what's wrong with that? I says, why don't you try being a uh, true American? He says, listen here, Buster. I says, there's only one. I'm Buster on the phone and I hug up. Well, at the time, I was prepared to go lose everything that I owned. And this is serious business now. Because when I left my home, I live in a beautiful home. I locked the door. I did not know if I'm going to be coming back. But I am going to push that button. Because I did all the paperwork. They have it all in their hands. And now you can't yes. find me that's brave enough to sign their name on the bottom because they don't want to step on nobody's toes and they have this little ladder that they want to climb. And here's an office of five or six. They're making 80 to a grand a year or a hundred grand a year that never issued a license to any in all those years. I'm the first guy that pushed this thing through. The night before we got our license, the rocket was in the tower, everything. But you can see that story and Gary Benz from GRB uh, Entertainment is doing my life story in a full length doc feature. And that's, they documented all this stuff through the years. They have actually hundreds of hours of, of film that they've shot, but we got to push the button and it went into space. So mm. there we are. Do you see that everyone? Do you see this? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is called believing in your dreams so much a burning desire to the point that nothing is going to get in your way from pushing that button. If you can and dream it, you can do it. It's that simple. It's, it's that Hill, simple. Baby. And Holy you cannot yeah. be beat. You cannot be beat if you don't quit. And you remember those, you remember about the mountain and the other things, I'm gonna tell you, you could be an, oh man, if I was 20 years old now or 15 or 14, knowing if the ability that you could, you could be anything in this world, you can do anything in this world, is you just never give up. You work hard. I always say, the harder I work, the luckier I get. You remember these yes. sayings that I tell you? I have a lot of them. There's one, one saying that also that's really important. To my, it may not sound good, but it... it so I found this wooden box. Uh, it, it was actually oh. a puzzle box. It was made out of wood. It took me a while to get the thing apart. And in there was a little book from when my, my grandfather was born in 1877. There was a book that was signed in there when you, when you get out of school, and his sister had written this in that little book, trust few and paddle your own canoe. What that meant is this, first off, so my sister's, my grandfather's sister told him, my grandfather told my dad, 
My dad told my mother, my mother told me, and I told you. So that's all the way back from 18, 1880s, actually. So that, but what it is is the, I, there's been some times in my life where I totally trusted some people because I was naive. As you get older, you learn, you know, but be careful who you're around and what you're doing because sometimes that's when such it comes great to, advice. And when it comes to money, boy, you can lose a friend real quick, I'm telling you. And I've I've had a couple situations in my life, but yeah, but I look at it this it's a learning thing. Everything is a learning tool. Everything, just remember, you gotta remember because what you know, it don't, you know, if you burn your finger on a hot stove, don't go touch that finger, that, that hot stove yes. again. You know, it's all you if you learn by your mistakes, as you get older, you know, you get some like my mom used to say, I get old too soon and smart too late. <laughs> you know? Do you think that do you think that your experience having, you know, with your experience in school, the traumatizing experience in school gave you this fire underneath you to achieve whatever you wanted in your life? It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Are you kidding? If they said, oh, you're a nice little boy. Oh, they, oh you know, you might have a little trouble, but you're a nice little boy. No, you know, it, it, you have a weapon. The, the dyslexic people out there, you have a weapon, man, that you have though, because you are so much yes. smarter than them on one side yes. of your brain. It, you know, who cares about certain poetry? It ain't gonna make any changes in your life, whether you can remember it or not. But remember all the good. Remember the good. And what you don't know, I can only know where my cell phone is. Pick up that darn phone and ask it. This oh, here it is, right there. That is smarter. <laughs> that is smarter than all the professors in the world, all in one bundle. Anything you ask, how to cut your toenails, it will tell you, it will show you. Any question you have, math, if, no, math, who needs, where you just ask uh, equations and stuff, and this thing's going to tell you whatever you need to know. You, it, it, this little brain is unbelievable, that tool. See, I look at it, if you can read and write, and you have the motivation, if you have motivation, you can do anything in your life. And now yes. with this tool, you don't have to go to some, it's all right here, but you have to be, inquisitive you have to you have to ask but if you see something visually made in youtube it makes it look so simple it's because, a game changer oh it's, uh, this thing oh man, man this isn't is it, it crazy to think isn't it crazy to imagine that this phone is more powerful than what we launched our our our, our, our oh, yeah. to the moon oh are you kidding yeah oh I mean, this so... in our hand in our palm yeah, oh. that's it. It's it. Oh. You just gotta ask it. You got you you got if you got the drive, just ask. I can learn anything I want. Why don't I fix a window screen? You know? Well, how do you fix just, a window ask, screen? Just ask Alexa. That's all. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, you know. So uh um uh, I'm sitting here looking at something. So um uh, so I, I do have a question for you. And yeah. I know that we do have some other questions that are our oh, yeah. audience has been asking us. Um but Let's. You said that you were working in Hollywood. You, know, you you were doing some work for movies, and I know that there's been a lot of discussion um, on um, some of your work with um, Evil Can Evil, and you know that that big jump. Can you uh, just share? Because this is just a different part of the story that you know we've not really touched upon, um, and that's your work as a stuntman. I mean, you've just touched upon every single corner of industry <laughs> well let so, me just tell you um, how i got there one thing always leads to another so at this point i'm running around the world set around the country setting world records with my rocket car from state to state to state so i end up in a shop out in california where i i need to work out of there and frank is our shop and so i was in there and a stunt guy came in there with a catapult that needed some wall welding on it that would shoot him up in the air if you're throwing anger there so me being the cocky guy I am, I said, so who built this piece of junk? And he said, what do you mean piece of junk? I says, man, you should use all aerospace fittings and hardware and solenoid valves and check valves. He says, what are you talking about? I says, well, what I'm talking about is I can build a, a, a catapult much better than this. So I built this guy a catapult. Before you know, another guy comes to me. And now I'm making, now all of a sudden I'm building stuff for the stunt industry, okay? Now, a guy by the name of Dar Robinson, 
I get involved. He was the number one stunt man in Hollywood. They, they did his life story on ABC. If you check the guy out, and Kitty O'Neill, the top. So he's the top guy stunt man, and the top woman who was Kitty O'Neill. She's deaf, deaf stunt woman. They did her life story, a silent victory on ABC, and she ended up setting a number of world records and then setting world records in my card. So I got involved, and that's another thing: get involved with good people. You know, yes. who you hang Absolutely. around with. If you're hanging around with some bum, uh, tell him to be a bum uh, if, if he's good at it. But other than that, uh, you know, I'm just being facetious now. But, you know, just hang around with the right people because you can gain so much knowledge from a successful person. That's the bottom line of that whole deal. You can learn. And life has never stopped learning. And I, I try to learn something every day. You know, if it's the smallest thing, but I still have this inquisitive thing right now. Like I'm, do, I'm studying on telescopes because I'm building a telescope right now. So I'm in and you in YouTube and I'm searching this and searching this deal out. And I, it, my telescope's coming along really cool. I'm going to have a really cool telescope. But um, and then after that, I want to build a drag bike. At my age, I want to build a, a Harley Davidson or another You're Harley just Davidson. You're nonstop. You're a nonstop. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, well if you if you um, if you look in my uh, into uh, my YouTube, you'll see a lot of the stuff that I've built. I'll post all your 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 website in the in the YouTube channel on the on the feed right after the show too, so people can go to it. So, I'm, I got inducted into the Stuntman's Hall of Fame. We jumped ahead a little bit. By the way, we set many records in the stunt business. A lot of records and stuff. But uh, so I got inducted in the uh, Stuntman's Hall of Fame, and we're coming back in a, in a motorhome. And the guys, I, I've never drank. I've, I've just always, my, I keep my brain cells. My friends all had a keg of beer and they got me all wound up. And I said, hey, Kai, tell us about the time that that, tell us about it. Funny, Jimmy says, you know, Kai, you've been talking for almost seven hours straight and you haven't told the same story twice. And then Bruce says, Kai, you got to write a book. And I'm going, you know darn well I can't write a book. So I come <laughs> home. He says, and I, at the time I was married, he says, you got to help me. My wife, she helped me for three days. She says, well, you know you're never going to sell this book. That was it. There was my challenge. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I search out keys on here, and I start typing. I fight with spell check because fight spell check is really stupid and don't figure out what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it took me two years to write my book. It was it was edited twice, and I sold it. I sold every copy out. You can still get them on Amazon. I don't have – I sold a thousand, a thousand copies like that. Wait, you, a wrote a, book. you wrote a book. Yeah. And you said that you couldn't read though, or reading was challenging and writing. So how did you learn how to read if you were writing well, a book? When you, when you say, when I talk about reading is reading is when you, I pick up a book and I try to read something else that somebody else has done. And if I, if, if you just put two lines in front of me, cover up the rest of it, I can read those two lines. What happens is my mind wanders on that page. I cannot focus. Yeah. That's what happens. Cover up those lines. I can read those lines. Oh, my, my, right. my, my vocabulary is not all that odd, but it, it's now that's one thing about my book. I think it kind of took my character out. It made it be a little bit like I wouldn't be normally say yes sir, no sir. But, but it kind of took a little bit of character out of me when they edited it. But yeah, but that's that's how I did it. And I would lay in bed. Yeah. Also, I would think of something and I would be up. But I had to search every key, every key search, fight spell check. And then I would go on a roll where I would write many sentences. And if you just looked at that, you'd say, what is this guy trying to write? But I could decipher those words and then go back and copy those words. You know, do those oh, words. absolutely. And you know what? I, I do have to say that this has been, this has been so much fun. And I, I, I know that there's still so much, there's still so much for us to talk about. And I know that a lot of our audience has a lot of questions and, um, we are going to have you back. We have to have you back because right. this is just this is just part one. Because well, you if I can this... help somebody, if I can help one person out there, it's worth it's worth my time to take and and try to help because I love kids. I know what they go through, and I will tell you, it's, it, it it sometimes it's not fun. Yeah. yeah so and, and I I think that that's so important. When we overcome adversity, we have we have an option. We can either you know we live our life and we. Can, can just be happy, or we can also dedicate part of our life to making sure those who went through the same adversity 
don't go through it again and can actually go through it with more confidence. So thank you so much for your, for your, for your dedication and just for being an inspiration for us all, really. Well, any way I can help, I'm, I'll be over there. I'll promise you that. And I can go by my own experiences and that's it. And uh, like I say, if I can help, it means a lot to me. Awesome. So here, I, I, I want to say that I'm going to be hanging out for a little bit on the comments. If you have any questions for Kai, uh, please feel free to either reach out to me um, or how can, how can people reach out to you if they have uh, questions or if they want to get involved with what you're doing? Well, it'd be best for to talk to me on the phone uh, uh, because it's really hard for me to peck, peck, peck still on the computer. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. Um, yeah, I tell you what, uh, to give me an email, it's Kai, you can go uh, Kai at speedzone.us and you could ask me a question and leave your phone number also. Perfect. Perfect. That okay, way. everybody. Well, I get awesome. back to because well, it, it's hard for me to, if I was to write a lot, it takes me a lot. It's still, I'm still not as bad as I used to be, but it's still it's hard for me. Yeah, well, really, this has been so much fun. This has really been so much fun. And I'm I'm excited to bring you back because we still have a lot more questions to, and, and conversations to talk about. So everyone, really, thank you for joining us. Um, again, if you have questions for Kai, please uh, either reach out to me or you can call him directly. I'll post the information on the chat. And if you have any questions on uh, how you can sign your, your, your child up for my mentorship program, uh, we uh, work to empower those with learning and attention challenges to build strength uh, and confidence around the way they learn uh, through self-advocacy. Uh, you can just reach out to me directly or just find our website at superpowerconsulting.com. All, All right, right. Thank Kai, thanks again.